Hello, and or welcome back to part four of my backup server build. Uh, today we're setting up SyncThing to copy all my media to the backup server. Uh, first off, this is a departure from what I planned. I initially wanted to use Duplicati since that's what I'm already using to backup some of the other things to blob storage. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Duplicati to play nice on my LAN. Um, I explored FTP, that didn't work out, it wasn't reliable or terribly performant. And I looked at doing map drives, but since the idea for this thing is to eventually move off-site, I opted against it. Uh, instead, I settled on SyncThing. With SyncThing, I was easily able to link my two servers, create specific libraries to back, to back up, uh, configure encryption and retention. Uh, I didn't end up going for encryption, but it's an option. Uh, and have the option to share things to other devices in the future. In today's video, we'll walk through installing SyncThing on Unraid, making sure we're not using a relay, so we're actually getting all the speed out of our LAN, sharing a folder, and then setting up some data retention and sync policies. I'll walk through the setup step-by-step -step on the destination server on Expanse, which we built together before. The steps will be the same for the source server. I'll do those off camera though. The first thing we want to do is head over to the apps tab here. And we'll search for sync thing. Uh, there's the bin hex package and the official package. I went with the official one. I like bin hex stuff. I just didn't go with it this time. Um, in my case, it's already installed and already doing backups. So we'll set up a new copy for this demo. You'll have an install button here. I have an action button here. I'll see you back in the config. The sync thing out of the box comes pretty well configured. Uh, the only changes I make really are switching this from bridge to its own ethernet connection uh, and then giving it a dedicated IP. In this case, I went with 50.51. It's not that big a thing on the backup server. On the main server, ports are starting to get sp uh, sparse, scarce, that's the word I wanted. And uh, giving each, each pod its own IP address just alleviates that problem. The big thing we want to do here is set the path where we'll back up. So sync thing will expose this data one path. It'll expose data two. I think it has a couple in, in the template. These are shared directories that sync thing has access to. So since this is on the backup server, I'm gonna edit this and give it a name of destination. Destination, uh, we want destination. There. Uh, we'll set the host, host path to mount user uh, sync thing data. There we go. And that'll do. So now it'll expose this folder to sync thing as a place to store data. Uh, in the more settings, there's nothing you have to configure here. This is where sync thing will store all of its config. So if you want to change that, go ahead. Um, I'm happy where that is. Once all that's set, hit apply and we're good to go. Give this just a minute to finish downloading and installing. Click on done. You can see I have two instances, one for the official one, well, one for the actual one that's doing my backups and then one for this demo. Uh, for the demo, we'll go into the UI. The first time we launch sync thing, we'll get asked this question about anonymous usage reporting. Uh, this one's up to you. I'm going to turn mine off, especially since this is a demo instance. We also get this lovely danger warning saying that there's no username or password, so let's go fix that. We'll click on settings. We'll gloss over general for the moment. We'll go to GUI and we'll set a username and password. Uh, I'm going to keep the username super simple. And honestly, the password too, but I'm not sure in that one. If I could type today, that'd be great. Uh, save that, it'll log us out. We'll have to log back in. Okay, uh, one thing I am gonna do here is set this to the light theme. And that's purely so that I can know where I am between this instance and the one on my source server. Okay, uh, the last thing we'll do is set the device name to be something useful. So we'll set it to 
uh, expand sync for now. Why not? Save that. You can see that refreshes up here. It gives us a new icon. We got this weird A-shaped, rocket-shaped thing. Now, before we link a second device and start syncing folders, I want to make sure that sync thing is going to drop data in the right place. So we're going to set up a couple defaults. We'll go to Action, Advanced. A lot of these don't mean anything to us right now. There are some nice defaults you can set in here, but you'll have to explore those on your own. The ones we care about are in the default folders. And we want to go all the way down to Path. We want to set this to the folder that we set up in the config. So in our case, that was slash, slash destination. With the path set, the only other change I want to make is I want to change the type to receive only. This way, this server will never try to push data to someplace else. Purely useful because of the backup server. If this was a device that was actually syncing files with something else, I would leave that the way it was. That's it. We'll click save. And as a last step, we're going to ditch this default folder. So expand it, go to edit, go to remove, and yes, all clean. Uh, I'm going to run over to my source server, get that set up real quick, and we'll be right back through Movie Magic. All right, here we are on the source server. I'm using the dark theme as promised, so we can easily tell where we are. Uh, this is all set up and we are ready to add a remote device. So we'll click add remote device as you'd expect. If you're doing this on a LAN, there's a really good chance that it will auto detect the other machine that you're setting up. Uh, if you're doing this over the internet, obviously you'll probably have to plug this in. Uh, we can just click this link and give it a good name, although it'll pull this down anyway, so let's just leave it. And that's it. Obviously, it hasn't connected from the other side yet, so we'll swap over to there. And here it is, ready for us with a nice message saying a device wants to connect. We'll click Accept. Uh, it pulled down the name, pulled down everything else. We are going to run over to Sharing real quick and say Auto Accept because, well, it's a backup server, we just want to accept everything. Uh, in advanced, we don't need to change anything at this point. Obviously, if you're backing up to an untrusted machine, you have checkboxes for it. If you're going over different connections, you have addresses you can specify. Uh, we're going to leave all of this as is. Click Save. And there we are, connected immediately. Same thing over here, source server, all connected. We are good to go. Now that we have a connection established, we need to make sure it's the right kind of connection. So we'll expand this, and what you want to look at is this connection type. You want this to say TCP LAN or some other form of LAN. Uh, if this says relay, it means your connection is going out to the internet and back to your other machine, and obviously you get a huge, huge bandwidth hit from that. Uh, if this does say relay, the way to fix it is to go into edit, into advanced and specify the IP address of your other machine. So in our case, this would be 10.68.50.51, like we configured earlier. Uh, that's it, set that, hit save. Obviously, because that's what we already had, it's not gonna change anything. If you do run into this issue where it is going through a relay, make sure you set IP addresses at both ends so that they both know how to connect locally. And that's it. Let's go set up our first synced folder. Uh, on this machine, I'm sharing my media library. Uh, we're going to share a single folder out of that so that we're not going through a ton of space. We'll do this quick and easy. We click Add Folder. We give it, well, I like to start from the bottom. Uh, I'd like to specify a path. If we type in a slash sync thing, will show us all the folders it has access to. Uh, in my case, I was super original and named my source folder source. So we'll click that. Another slash. This is uh, all the media I have access to, but I don't want to share all of it for this one, so we'll go to Shows. Let's share the only season of ALF I own. That seems like a good idea. Give this a label, call it ALF, and then you want to give it some kind of useful folder ID. For me, I like to go server or source name slash folder name. 
Next, we'll go to the sharing tab. Uh, make sure we're sharing this with the expanse. You can set an encryption password. Uh, I'm not going to because both these machines are in my house. Certainly this is something I might change when this thing goes off site. Next, we'll go to file versioning. I'm not gonna set anything here. I'll set this on expanse, but for the source, we don't need anything. Let's move on to ignore patterns. Uh, I don't set any ignore patterns in this case. I'd consider setting this if I had folders with very temporary data. Like for example, I'm running zone minder, which keeps a rolling 24 hour window of uh, short clips and uh, pictures that it keeps. There's no sense backing that up. It would just throttle all the hardware and eat up a ton of space. We'll go to advanced. The only big change I make here is that it's changed this from send and receive to send only. And that's to keep it from accepting files from the backup server for whatever reason. Everything else is more security minded. Again, not a huge thing for me because I own both these machines. If I was doing this for multiple people or to a machine that's off site, I would dig deeper into these. Uh, for now, that's it. We'll click save. And you can see it's scanning our folder. Let's jump over to Expanse and see what it's doing with this. Over here, you can see it got auto accepted. Uh, we do want to make a couple quick changes to make sure this is storing the way we want it to store. So we'll open this up, click on edit, and the one we want to change is file versioning. Over here, we're going to go to trash can file versioning. Trash can file versioning might sound counterintuitive, but what this does is if a file is moved, replaced, or deleted on the source machine, it'll hold it in stasis here for whatever number of days we specify. Uh, personally, I like to go with seven. It'll store backup versions in an ST versions folder. That's fine. You can put this elsewhere if you like. And then the cleanup interval is currently set to an hour. That's also fine. Now, honestly, for a multimedia library, Setting trash can versioning doesn't make a ton of sense. These files aren't moving a lot, and if they are, it's likely because I'm renaming things and I don't want this thing to hang on to seven days of backup. I would do this much more if I was uh, syncing a documents folder or something else that shifts a lot and is much more at risk of accidental deletes than season three of ALF. But all the same, that's it. Save and done. And while we did all that, it finished syncing. Uh, 4.4 gigabytes of ALF are safely backed up on the storage server or on the backup server. And that's really it. We've set up sync thing on the source server, the destination or the backup server. We've linked them properly. We've made sure they're not going through a relay. We've set up the backup server to auto accept any folders that come in from the source. And we've synced our first folder with all the right settings. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you got something useful out of this. Uh, join me again next Monday and we'll see what our next project will be. I don't know yet, so it'll be a surprise for both of us. Bye for now.